Larry Puri, Hit Law's Director of Marketing and Communication. And I wanted to wish you a hearty congratulations. All your hard work has paid off. You've done it. And we can't wait to see what you do next. Congratulations on your graduation and good luck on the bar exam. Congratulations, class of 2022. You did it. I'm so happy for you. Hooray! Hi, everyone. I'm so proud of you. And just remember, my advice for the future is to always be kind to your IT person. Hello, Pitt Law graduates. My name is Beth Ann Fischke, and I'm the program administrator for the online programs here at Pitt Law. I just wanted to send a heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you and wish you all the best in your future. Congratulations. Hey, Pitt Law class of 2022. This is Jackie Belzik, executive editor for Jurist. And I just want to say I'm so proud of you for the resilience you've shown over these past couple of crazy years and to say congratulations and wish you all the best in the future. Hey, this is Amy Chase congratulating the class of 2022 on their graduation. You guys did an awesome job. You made it through pandemics, you made it through restricted access, you made it through everything. And I'm super proud of you. Congratulations. Class of 2022, congratulations. You did it. You have experienced so much in these past three years and you persevered and now we are so proud of you. So congratulations. Enjoy the special day. Congratulations, graduates. This is Mimi Jeffries in the Financial Aid Office. I want to wish you the best as you leave the walls of Barco and start your new career. Congratulations, class of 2022. So Allie just came in here and yelled at me and said, you have to do your goodbye video. But I don't like doing goodbye videos. First of all, I hate saying goodbye to any graduating class. And second of all, it's not goodbye for me. I'm going to see you guys next Monday. Pit Law class of 22, I can't believe it's time for me to say this, but a huge congratulations on your graduation. I remember meeting all of you in orientation and I have loved every second of getting to know you and working with you as your dean of students. And so I hope as you embark on this next endeavor that you remember that despite the fact that you're gonna go on to incredible professional careers, that your Pit Law family is always here for you and you can always come back and visit us, and you will always be part of the Pit Law family. So I am sending you off with the biggest wishes and big hugs and my deepest congratulations. I am so very proud of each and every one of you.
congratulations to the class of 2022. This is Lori McMaster of the External Relations Office. This is such a major achievement and a fabulous culmination of all of your hard work and determination, especially under extraordinary circumstances. You did it! I wish you all the happiness in the world going forward. Three cheers for you. Hey there, Pitt Law Class of 2022 graduates. I'm Corey Paris, Pitt Law's Director of Marketing and Communications, and I wanted to wish you a hearty congratulations. All your hard work has paid off, you've done it, and we can't wait to see what you do next. Congratulations on your graduation and good luck on the bar exam. Congratulations, class of 2022. You did it. I'm so happy for you. Hooray! Hi, everyone. I'm so proud of you. And just remember, my advice for the future is to always be kind to your IT person. Hello, Pitt Law graduates. My name is Beth Ann Pischke, and I'm the program administrator for the online programs here at Pitt Law. I just wanted to send a heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you and wish you all the best in your future. Congratulations. Hey, Pitt Law Class of 2022. This is Jackie Belzik, Executive Editor for Jurist. And I just want to say I'm so proud of you for the resilience you've shown over these past couple of crazy years and to say congratulations and wish you all the best in the future. Hey, this is Amy Change congratulating the class of 2022 on their graduation. You guys did an awesome job. You made it through pandemics, you made it through restricted access, you made it through everything, and I'm super proud of you. Congratulations. Class of 2022, congratulations. You did it. You have experienced so much in these past three years, and you've persevered, and now we are so proud of you. So congratulations. Enjoy this special day. Congratulations, graduates. This is Mimi Jeffries in the Financial Aid Office. I want to wish you the best as you leave the walls of Barco and start your new career. Congratulations, class of 2022. So Allie just came in here and yelled at me and said, you have to do your goodbye video. But I don't like doing goodbye videos. First of all, I hate saying goodbye to any graduate class. And second of all, it's not goodbye for me. I'm going to see you guys next Monday. Pit Law class of 22, I can't believe it's time for me to say this, but a huge congratulations on your graduation. I remember meeting all of you in orientation, and I have loved every second of getting to know you and working with you as your dean of students. And so I hope as you embark on this next endeavor that you remember that despite the fact that you're going to go on to incredible professional careers, that your Pit Law family is always here for you and you can always come back and visit us, and you will always be part of the Pit Law family. So I am sending you off with the biggest wishes and big hugs and my deepest congratulations. I am so very proud of each and every one of you.
Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you. Welcome, one and all, to our 2020 celebration of the graduates of Pitt Law. You may have already figured out that I am not Amy Wildermuth, the dean of the law school, but rather Allie Linsenmeyer, dean of students. Dean Amy has sent the following message for all of you. After two plus years of being in the trenches every day with you and avoiding COVID, I made a trip to DC. Big mistake. Like everyone else who's been to DC in the last week or so, I tested positive for COVID this morning. And therefore, Allie tells me, must follow the rules and stay home, which is true. I will miss seeing all of you in person, but I am watching from home and cheering for you. You are amazing, incredible, outstanding. One more note, Allie and Heider are reading my script, so please be sure to laugh at all the mom jokes. Now you have a commencement to get to, so let's start and get on with it. And I know Dean Amy would love to be here with all of you today. So let's begin. I offer my warmest welcome to all of our remarkable graduates and our distinguished guests to our law school commencement ceremony. Today is a day of joy. After years of answering questions in class, over Zoom, on remote exams, on in-person exams, without masks, with masks, from judges, from professors, from your classmates, from your family, and from that friend of a friend who always seems to have a friend in need of a hypothetical legal question, we are here to say one thing. You did it. We are proud of all you have done to get to this day, and it has been no easy ride. Of course, law school has never been easy, but these past few years might just take the cake. When many of you began in the pre-masking days, you thought the biggest challenge might be Oakland parking. Then you learned it was potentially the mute button on Zoom, which Dean Hamoudi can confirm I was unable to unmute myself yesterday. <laughs> and then there was mask me. And finally, the Vegas rules of the ground floor. What happens on G, my friends, stays on G. You have persisted, you have endured, and you have made it. And you did it by digging deep showing a tenacity and resolve that you might not have known you had. You came together in these difficult times as one pit law community, demonstrating understanding and kindness towards one another, especially at the most difficult moments, treating one another with respect and dignity, and learning to value and trust one another even when, or perhaps because of your differences. You are all part of one team who pulled for each other to make it to this moment and get your degree. The friendships you have made here will provide you critical support throughout your career and life. I know you will treasure those relationships long into the future. You also had the help of the amazing Pitlaw faculty and staff, many of whom are here and who are just as proud as I am of all of you. Please join me in thanking them for all they have done, not just to make today special, but for making Pitt Law the incredible place that it is. Most important of all, though, today would not be possible without the help of those gathered here and those watching at you at home who love you. Your many gifts were nurtured with the love and support of the important people in your life. Although they may never come to fully appreciate your use of multi-factor tests in determining whose turn it is to unload the dishwasher, or those three points briefly that you always have ready and, let's be honest, are never brief, they remain as they have been by your side cheering you on. Let's actually stand up and thank your friends and family for all they have done to support you on this journey.
And now, with fur no further delay, let's get the party started. I am delighted to introduce our next speaker, Mike Zula. During his time at Pitt Law, Mike has served as the president and treasurer of the SBA, as well as the professional development coordinator of Outlaw. Mike served on a variety of Pitt Law committees, such as the Standards and Petitions Committee, the Budget and Planning Committee, and the Appointments Committee. Mike also served as Pitt Law's representative for the ABA Law Student Division, Pitt's Graduate and Professional School Graduate Council, as well as the University Council on Graduate Studies. Mike is a proud member of the Student Advisory Council, which is organized by the Office of Equity and Inclusive Excellence under the leadership of Dean Tomar Pearson Brown and Vincent Johnson. Additionally, Mike worked closely with Professor Michael Madison as a research assistant on the Governing Knowledge Commons project, as well as with Professor Ann Sinsheimer on a project of resilience and engagement in law students. During law school, Mike worked for various le in-house legal departments, volunteered with the Allegheny County Housing Court, and volunteered with the Name Change Project. Before attending Pitt Law, Mike received his BA in Philosophy of Justice, Law, and Values from Penn State University, along with minors in English, Business, and Theater. He is a proud Pittsburgh native and volunteers his time with the Penn State Greater Pittsburgh Alumni Chapter Blue White Law at, at, and the communications director. During his spare time, Mike is a cycling instructor, an educator at Lululemon, and enjoys spending time with his friends and family on and off the kickball field. Mike has worked very closely with me during his tenure in Pitt Law and has become a dear friend of mine. And it is my great pleasure to invite Mike to the podium. Thank you, Dean Alley. Hello, everyone. Pitt Law, you all look incredible today. Unfortunately, I was not in charge of costume design, so we also all look like extras in an episode of Downton Abbey. Welcome to the friends and family who have come to watch us on this exciting day, and to all of the Pitt Law faculty members, staff, and administration who have been with us since 2019 and were kind enough to join us on this cloudy yet important day. I truly cannot understate how honored and humbled I am to be standing here today as your Student Bar Association president. Being able to lead the Student Bar Association over the last year has been exciting and challenging, but ultimately an experience I will carry with me forever as one of the most rewarding. In August of 2019, when this graduating class was sitting together for the first time at Pitt Law Orientation, none of us could have predicted what the next three years had in store. We witnessed a global pandemic America reckoning with race and police violence, supply chains faltering, the backsliding of democracy, failures in addressing climate change, and our individual rights being threatened as recent as this week, all the while being law students, studying for exams, briefing cases, and trying to figure out if we were muted or if our microphone was actually broken while in Zoom class. What an interesting time to be in law school. With all of this strife considered, and an unpredictable amount more on the horizon. This only reinforces why the world needs talented and dedicated legal minds. The future attorneys graduating law school in 2022 are some of the most resilient, which is what excites me for the future rather than being afraid of it. I am excited by all of the graduates in this room because they brought all of their diverse backgrounds and talents to Pitt Law and made the school and me a better and more curious person. In this room, there are editors of the University of Pittsburgh Law Review and all of its other journals. There are winners of moot court and mock trial competitions, and there are students advocating for community members in one of its clinics. At this graduating class, there are future partners of law firms, judges, members of Congress, and leaders of public interest organizations providing legal support to some of the most vulnerable members of our society. Most importantly, there are daughters, sons, sisters, brothers, mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, and individuals with more potential than words permit me to describe. Individuals who are loved and respected by simply entering a room. When the individual you are supporting here today crosses the stage to accept their diploma, and when they join you afterwards, 
Please make sure they know how proud you are of them for joining a profession that only 0.3% of Americans have the privilege and resilience to be a part of. I also want to take a moment for the Pitt Law Class of 2022 to thank those of you in attendance today. No matter if you are in this space or whether you are joining us around the globe via live stream, you have supported someone in this room today. Whether or not you are aware of it, someone in this room has relied on you, has given you a phone call when things got hard, and will also be their first phone call when they pass the bar exam. Fellow graduates, please join me in applauding all of your supporters in this room. I would be remiss if I did not give you all the chance to take a moment to recall all of the people in your corner who may not be with us in the physical sense any longer. I assure you, they are just as proud of you as those in the room with us today. The world needs exceptional attorneys more than ever, and I have no doubt that each of you will make an impact on your community, this country, and the world. Whether it be through actions big or many small acts, you have the opportunity to make the world a better place for each of us by guiding your clients, organizations, and government to justice, by distinguishing right from wrong, fact from fiction, and empathy from apathy. We have the chance to take this moment and all of our talents and use them to change people's lives, all the while being successful as defined by our happiness and the impact we have on the world and not our title or paycheck that we hold. I wouldn't be here without the love and support from both sets of my parents, grandparents, and friends all here with us today. Of course, I have to thank my cat Binks as well. The ways in which you've supported me are immeasurable, and I could never repay you, but I promise to be the best I can while never forgetting who got me here. To Dean Alley, Dean Amy, Dean Pearson Brown, Professor Sinsheimer, and Professor Madison, thank you for making me a better person simply by believing in me, trusting me, and giving me an open door to walk into whenever I needed support or a snack. Pitt Law Class of 2022, sometimes I wonder why I decided to go to law school in a city that sees 203 cloudy days per year, this being one of them. But seeing you all every day in class and in this room today makes it quite clear that I made the right choice. Congratulations, and let's savor this moment for the rest of our lives. We did it! It is now my pleasure to introduce Pitt Law faculty member, Professor Kevin Ashley. Thank you, Mike. It's my pleasure to introduce Matt Nace, who is class president of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law's class of 2022. While serving as 3L class president, he served as chair of the Student Bar Association Elections Committee and as a student member of the Pitt Law Diversity Committee. During his time at Pitt Law, Matt was a teaching assistant for legal writing and federal civil procedure. Matt was also a research assistant for Professor Jacqueline Lipton and a Pitt Law Ambassador. Matt joined the Pitt Law Elder Clinic as a certified legal intern in January 2022. Before attending Pitt Law, Matt earned a BA in History and Political Science from the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown. While at Pitt Johnstown, Matt served as a live-in firefighter with the Richland Township Fire Department. Matt is an Eagle Scout and continues to volunteer as a firefighter. I'm delighted to invite Matt up to speak. Thank you, Professor Ashley, for the uh, kind introduction. Before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge everyone that's here with us today. Without you, the class of 2022 would not be graduating today. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. So 
So it took a long time to figure out what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, my first option was to talk about the experiences and accomplishments of the class of 2022. However, we'd be here until at least next Tuesday just talking about the accomplishments of the class. Little over my five minutes, so we're gonna skip that one. My second idea was to take a few minutes to talk about myself. Uh, it sounded boring when I thought about it, and if I was gonna be bored talking about it, there's no way you weren't going to be bored listening to it. So we'll go with option three. What we do is important, and we can do better. About a month ago, I met with one of my clinic clients to sign some documents. After we were done signing, we talked for about 10 minutes. I answered his questions, we talked about some next steps, and then he made two statements. He said, thank you for your help, and there's no way I could have done this on my own. What we do is important, and we can do better. I thought about the statements. I'd heard the same things, activating cell phones at Best Buy during undergrad and selling hardware in high school. Nothing really new about the statements, but for some reason they stuck with me. For about a week, I caught myself randomly thinking about these two statements, and I figured out why. He was right. There is no way he could have done it on his own. Without my legal help and without the clinic, he would have gone the rest of his life without this simple legal help that I was able to provide. My work and the work through the clinic provided him with the peace of mind that he needed and that only a lawyer could provide. What we do is important and we can do better. As law school graduates, we will all take different paths. Some will start jobs at private firms. Others will go into public interest. Some will clerk for judges, and some will be judges themselves. Some of you will likely never practice law, but we will have one thing in common we will be in a position to make a difference. Volunteer in the community. Take on pro bono clients. Help others learn the law. Never be content with the legal system that we have. Fight for the causes you believe in. And never stop learning. Class of 2022, what we do will be important and we will do better. Thank you. Now I have the privilege of introducing this year's Robert T. Harper Excellence in Teaching Award. Each year the members of the graduating class vote for this award. The 2022 recipients of the Robert T. Harper Excellent in Teaching Award are Vice Dean Hamoudi and Professor O. <laughs> Vice Dean Hamoudi serves as Vice Dean of the Law School and Professor of Law. His scholarship focuses on Middle Eastern and Islamic law. He teaches courses including contracts, UCC Sales, and the Islamic Law Seminar. Vice Dean Hamoudi holds a BS from MIT and is JD and JSD from Columbia Law School. Vice Dean Hamoudi was previously awarded the Robert T. Harper Excellence in Teaching Award in 2014. Professor O served as the chair of the Pitt Law Diversity Committee for the previous academic year. Uh, and he serves as the faculty advisor of the Pitt Law Journal of Law and Commerce. His scholarship focuses on corporate law and the economic analysis of law. 
Professor Hol O holds a BA from Yale University and a JD from the University of Chicago School of Law. And Professor O was previously awarded the Robert T. Harper Excellence in Teaching Award in 2016. Vice Dean Hamoudi and Professor O. Thanks. <laughs> well, it's a real honor. Um, and just before we came up here to talk, uh, Lori had mentioned that this was really exciting. Uh, and it, we were the Barbara Streisand and Catherine Hepburn of Pitt Law because apparently they had shared an Academy Award once. Uh, so I'll take it. For the avoidance of doubt, I'm Catherine Hepburn. Uh, physical resemblance makes it obvious, I guess. But uh, he's Barbara Streisand. Uh, there is a certain irony. Uh, to the fact that uh, Peter and I happened to co-win this award, because I think the first couple of years that we were here at Pitt, uh, one of the things that Peter and I li liked to do was to crash the law review party that the you know the law students have on Thursday night, and we would go in uh, to figure out where it was, and you know order a club soda with lime, and you know sip it with the most judgmental professorial looks we could, you know sort of, and stare at everybody, and then you know the whole party be ruined within 20 minutes, and then we'd go see a movie or something. Uh, it was a lot of fun, um, and there are people who are lawyers, perhaps in this room, who uh, if you're welcome, because I'm pretty sure I saved you from some character and fitness problems. Um, interestingly enough, this very year, right, the Barrister's Ball was coming back. It had been out for COVID. Um, and for those of you who aren't aware, the Barrister's Ball is law school prom. And as vice dean, the day after the Barrister's Ball is always a very difficult one, the day and the day or so, a uh, few days after, because there's always something that seems to happen at the Barrister's Ball every year, right? And so it's, uh, you know, some sort of altercation or a vendor. Uh, one year a student came and said, I might have a character or fitness issue. I ended up uh, vomiting on the shoe of a police officer. Is that character or fitness? Of course, I'm sitting there thinking, what police officer? Why police officer? You're at the prom. Why are you? Anyway. so. The whole, thing, the whole thing was a little difficult. And then it was the first day of Ramadan that they decided to do the Barrister's Ball. I'm going to remember that, Zula, by the way. Uh, and I was like, I cannot handle this, right? Trying to fast, handle this whole thing. And then you got all this. So I said, Peter, remember how we used to crash law review? And he said, yeah, that was really silly and mature. I said, no, here's what we're doing, right? Call Alina Bayless from DC. We're getting the band back together one night only. We're going to Barrister's Ball. And Peter, you're all very lucky, because Peter actually did talk me out of it. Right? And Peter had said, no, no, you don't understand, right? This class, this particular class, you can correct me on any, he's going to talk in a second. This particular class is way, they're not going to have these problems, right? The things that you're talking about are from the past. This is a special class. This is the first class that Dean Amy Wildermuth brought in. She helped recruit. She helped lead. This is, these, these are, you know, mature students. They're wise. Nothing's going to happen. And I remember thinking, I have your address, and I realize that your wife is seven months pregnant, but I'm going to come to your house, and we're going to have words if that turns out not to be true. But interestingly enough, nothing did happen. Um, and I thought, well, you know, maybe Peter's right, but I thought that was very unlikely. It was probably a fluke, right? And then upon hearing that Peter and I had won this award, I think you guys demonstrated very amply your wisdom, your maturity, your judgment, and your intelligence. So congratulations to all of you. I really do uh, want to congratulate you for that. So, In all seriousness, of all the titles that you know, I happen to have at the law school, as a scholar, and as a vice dean, an academic integrity officer, and all those things, the one that I really treasure and cherish the most is teacher. Uh, and I can't tell you how grateful I am and how much, uh, how happy I am when I'm walking downtown and someone will say, you know, Dean Hamoudi, I'm not sure if you remember me or not, and, you know, very often the, the face is familiar, but the name might not be, but, you know, you taught me contracts, and it, it changed my life, and I'm a commercial law lawyer now, and, and, and just, uh, you know, it really started in your class. And it, the, the, amount of, uh, the amount of satisfaction that that gives me, and I know that often, you know, people are hesitant to, to, to approach people who may or may not recognize them. I'm always very, very grateful, uh, and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity uh, to, to, to be a teacher. Uh, there isn't a class that I am not in the middle of and just am amazed that I not only have the opportunity to do this, but the people would actually pay me to do this. The opportunity to, to, to win this award and really to speak to all of you and to, to teach with such a wonderful group of colleagues. I'm really privileged. I'm really, really thankful. So with the deepest humility and appreciation and gratitude, I want to thank all of you for a really special award. Thank you.
good morning, everyone. Uh, so when I learned that Vice Dean Hamoudi, AKA Catherine Hepburn, and I ended up in a tie, I told myself, this is not the Oscars. I told myself, this isn't about love. And I told myself, nothing's gonna make me do anything crazy. So I guess, except probably talking to myself. Uh, but seriously, um, it's a genuine privilege to receive the Robert T. Harper Excellence in Teaching Award and to share it with Vice Dean Hamoudi. This is an award named after Robert Harper, who was a beloved and treasured member of the Pitt Law faculty uh, and someone who's especially dear to me because he taught business law. Over a decade ago, Bob was the first and the only adjunct to ever receive this award. And sadly, he passed away the very following year. But Bob's many passionate contributions to his students, to Pitt Law, are part of a legacy that I, along with Vice Dean Humudi, are very proud to be connected with through this award. And all of you are a vital part of this legacy. Today, you will complete your legacy as a student, and you'll commence your legacy as a graduate of this illustrious institution. But before that happens, I'd like you to think back to the very first day when you walked into Barco Law, that magnificent example of brutalist architecture. And let me emphasize brutal. This was the day when you embarked on your journey in law. This was the day that you were gonna start learning about the law, to learn about how to think like a lawyer with the goal of ultimately becoming one. Now, as we all know, that journey was abruptly interrupted. The world was turned upside down and in ways that actually did kind of resemble stranger things. But for better or for worse, all of that is a part of your journey. And one lesson from these past few years is that your journey has not, and it will not, occur in a straight path. Whatever path you take today, in your professional career and in your personal life, will have zigs and zags. It'll have starts and stops. It'll have setbacks and successes. Part of this path is white space. It's something that you can't draw or you can't control. But those aren't things for you to fear or to avoid because those are the things that can offer you the sorts of opportunities and surprises that can be a real source of joy. But part of this path is actually in your control. You've all heard the maxims, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Or the harder you work, the luckier you get. Or that some of the greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. All these maxims are cliches, and they're all true. Achieving your dreams requires elements of diligence, luck, and humility. But the key ingredient in all of this is you. The last three years was not about acquiring legal skills, wasn't about preparing for the bar exam, or about finding a job. It was about learning about yourself, who you are, and who you want to be. Over your career, you will face professional challenges and ethical dilemmas that will require a choice. And whatever choice you make, just remember that doing well is not mutually exclusive with doing right. At some point, you'll be the only one left in the room. And regardless of whether that room is a courtroom or a boardroom, you'll have to live with your own decisions. So make the decision that you believe is right. Don't just decide what you won't stand for, decide what you do stand for. Develop your own compass and trust it. Good lawyers have the ability to ask questions and to think critically. And as the saying goes, a lawyer who represents himself has a fool for a client. But in reality, it's the questions that you're going to ask yourself 
and the capacity to be self-critical that will guide you in whatever you ultimately decide to do. And if you do that, I have no doubt that each and every one of you will amaze all of us here on this stage, this faculty, your friends, your family, and most importantly, yourself. I wish you all the best in whatever you decide to do. Congratulations. Thank you, Dean Hamoudi and Professor O. I congratulate you both on this very well-deserved honor. You are incredible teachers and colleagues, and we are all grateful for all you have both done for all, the law school and all of our students. I'm gonna now invite Dean Hamoudi up. So now just to be clear, I'm playing the role of Dean Wildermuth, so I'll be much more serious, I promise. Uh, I have the honor of introducing someone who needs no introduction. Chair or, uh, Chancellor Emeritus Mark Nordenberg got his start. Uh, I have to, it says just a few short years ago as a Pitt Law faculty member, I have to do a fact check. It's a little bit longer than that. Um, uh, and he was known for his excellence in the classroom. That part is certainly true. Uh, teaching, among other things, civil procedure. Uh, he was the dean of the law school for eight years and then served as chancellor at the University of Pittsburgh for nearly uh, 20 years. He le left behind an incredible achievement, a legacy of incredible achievement uh, and impact. He's certainly, he's certainly, he's currently, excuse me, the chair of Pitt's Institute of Politics. Uh, he has won so many awards that if I were to attempt to talk through them, it would literally, it would be, we'd be, we'd be here well into the evening. Uh, Chancellor Nordenberg is deeply beloved by students, staff, faculty, and alumni, not only at the law school, but throughout the University of Pittsburgh. Perhaps most remarkable of all, he's fondly regarded for his instant recall of the names and details of the lives and families of his students, even those from more than 40 years ago, a uh, feat we still marvel at. I still remember, this is me now, uh, I still remember uh, when I became a full professor and I was given that honor at, at Pitt, and it was really wonderful to receive a letter, a handwritten letter from Mark. Uh, you know, I mean, he's, as chancellor, I'm sure he's, he's got quite a bit to do. Um, that not only mentioned uh, and congratulated me for my promotion, but also mentioned uh, or asked if I was continuing to, uh, to keep up with swimming, because at the time I had been uh, doing a lot of swimming. It was really a heartfelt personal note. It's a, it's a good example of the kind of person uh, that, that Mark is. We remain, we at the law school uh, remain uh, a beneficiary of Jar Chancellor Nordenberg's generosity in numerous ways and all deeply appreciate everything that he and his wife Nikki have done for us and continue to do for us. And so it's really, uh, I'm really honored and grateful not only, my, not only on uh, Dean uh, Wilderman's behalf but also on my own uh, to introduce Chancellor Martin Nordenberg. Um, and Chancellor Nordenberg, let me say again how much of a delight it is to have you. Thank you very much, Dean Hamoudi. I'm grateful for the kind remarks and the very warm welcome. Uh, though I was spirited out of the law school and into the Cathedral of Learning many years ago, uh, a big piece of my heart always will be with this community. And it is a particular privilege to be here today to share such a happy, and important occasion with the graduates, their family members, and friends, and also to have been asked to introduce Dawn Hickton, uh, a former student, a good friend, and a person for whom I have enormous respect. Uh, I have known Dawn since she was a law student, and her name was Dawn Sapansky. Over the course of her law school years, our interactions took many forms. Uh, she enrolled in classes taught by me. Uh, I was a faculty advisor to student competitions in which she participated. She worked as a research assistant for former Dean Ed Sell, who was one of my closest colleagues and someone with whom I regularly partnered on professional activities. We also bonded in a different kind of way because Don had a study carol right outside my office. 
that also is one of the ways in which I first came to know David Hickton, then a law student and now her husband, who is seated next to her on the stage. Uh, Dave seemed to have a strategy in mind, uh, that is, if he hung around her carol often enough, uh, his reward would be some attention from Dawn. Uh, clearly it worked, and though there are those who say that the Dawn-Dave match was made in heaven, uh, I know for a fact that it was made on the fifth floor of the Barco Law Building. And before I focus entirely on Dawn, let me say something about Dawn and Dave as a pair. I believe that they are the only couple in the history of the law school to each have been asked to be the commencement speaker. I know that they are the only pair in the history of the university to each have been honored as a legacy laureate one of the university's most distinguished graduates uh, on the basis of their accomplishments. Dawn and Dave also are the parents, the proud parents of six wonderful children who span an age range from uh, experienced international professional uh, who has had postings all around the world uh, to a high school student who is a nationally ranked young horsewoman. Uh, and I need to note that one of their middle children also is a graduate of Pitt Law. I already told you that Dawn regularly studied outside my office, so you can assume she was a serious student. And I can assure you that she also was a very good student. But there are two other qualities that really made Dawn stand out uh, when she was at Pitt Law. The breadth of her talents uh, and her almost superhuman competitive streak. Uh, if there was any law school competition, uh, Dawn not only entered, but she won. Uh, and I'm not speaking loosely now, I'm speaking literally. Uh, appellate moot court, trial court, client counseling competition, all were created to uh, develop and assess different skills. Uh, Dawn apparently had not been told that because she was just interested in winning, uh, which she did. Uh, and the quest for excellence and that combination of qualities really have characterized her post-law school career. Uh, her first job was serving as a trial attorney for U.S. Steel. As the daughter of a granddaughter of a steel worker, uh, that was in some ways the realization of a dream for her. Within a very short time, she was trying big cases all over the country, uh, including serving as the successful lead counsel in a billion-dollar case, which was the largest in the history of the company. After serving as a corporate trial counsel for about a decade, she decided that she wanted to do something else, so she came back to the law school as a clinical professor where she helped to develop the corporate counsel clinic. Then, after three years, she was recruited by RTI International Metals to serve as their general counsel. They wanted her so badly that they arranged to have someone drive her from her suburban Pittsburgh home to their eastern Ohio headquarters every day. After 10 years at RTI, including a stint as its chief financial officer, she became the president and CEO of the company. That positioned her first to deal with that nasty commuting problem in a different way. 
She just moved the headquarters of the company to Pittsburgh. And after several years in that office, and having made the company measurably stronger, uh, she led it to a merger with Alcoa, a stock-for-stock -stock transaction valued at one and one-half billion dollars. At that point, Dawn became a founding partner of a consulting services firm that advised other executives and also began serving on the boards of other companies. One of those companies was Jacobs Engineering, a very large, interesting international firm that does business in 40 countries, has 55,000 employees, and annual revenues of about $14 billion. After a few years, she had created such a positive impression within the board uh, that her director colleagues persuaded her that she needed to change roles and become a company executive. So she became the president of Jacob Critical Mission Solutions, and in that role has responsibility for 20,000 employees in four major lines of business, aerospace engineering, nuclear international business, and cyber and intelligence. In addition to all of the accolades she will receive from her children tomorrow on Mother's Day, Dawn has received many honors and served in many impactful roles. One of the most important for us is that she served as a trustee of the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, in fact, her entering class on the board consisted of three people, Dan Marino, Brian Generalovich, and Dawn. The name Brian Generalovich, I know, is not as familiar as the name Dan Marino. Uh, but when he left Pitt, he was recruited for basketball by the New York Knicks uh, and in football by both the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers, who then were in different conferences. And we're still trying to decide who was more competitive, Dan or Brian or Dawn. Dawn also chaired the board of the Federal Reserve of Cleveland and then, following a pattern, became the chair of all of the chairs of the regional federal reserves. She also was the first woman to serve as the internet president of the International Titanium Association. Dawn has announced that she is going to step away from her executive position at Jacobs early this summer. In terms of her career, I don't know what she will do next, but her record suggests we all should stay tuned. Uh, and I do know that the very next thing she is going to do uh, is to speak to you. And so it is my privilege to present your fellow Pitt Law alum, Dawn S. Hickton. Thank you. Chancellor Emeritus Nordenberg, for your extremely kind and very generous introduction. You, Mark, have been a dear friend to Dave and I for a long time. It's been an amazing relationship, and I really, we really do thank you and appreciate it. Thank you. Graduates, and to the esteemed members of the Pitt Law faculty, to parents, friends, family here today, and to the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, Class of 2022, congratulations. I vividly recall this day, almost 40 years ago, when I sat in a similar seat, back then it was at Soldiers and Sailors Hall, for my own law school graduation ceremony. And what I most recall was the pride pouring off my mom and dad and my then fiance, Dave Hickton. 
And as the ceremony progressed, that pride was palpable. And while I was excited to have finally completed my studies, it was the emotion of my parents that I remember the most. As a first-generation college student, as well as the first person in my family to attend a postgraduate program, their sense of pride was overwhelming. As you heard from Chancellor Nordberg, I also had an opportunity as a parent. When our son Daniel graduated in 2019 from Pitt Law School, to feel that sense of pride. So I can imagine what the parents and the family members in the, in the audience feel today. And so I say to all of you, congratulations for all you have done to support your student now to become a lawyer. So congratulations to you. To the law graduates of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, today marks the first day of a career filled with many incredible opportunities. And my simple message to all of you is embrace those opportunities and do it with purpose. I didn't have a preview of those who spoke before me to hear what they were going to say, but the theme is clear. Embrace the opportunities with purpose. You join a profession that has its roots in ancient Greece and Rome, a skilled and regulated profession developed first during the Roman Empire when Byzantine advocates acquired high status and esteem as they became the arbiters of disputes, judges and notaries of sacred legal documents. Fast forward in time, and the founding fathers of the American colonies in the 1700s, it was lawyers who became the powerful local and colonial leaders, scholarly individuals steeped in the rules of English common law, which as we all know, was eventually adopted by all 13 colonies and upon which we still rely today, as you learned well over the last three years. And indeed, in the profession, 55 delegates to the Constitutional Convention. Of those 55, 35 were lawyers. And today, over 1 million practitioners in the United States hold law degrees and span careers across the judiciary, academia, government, business, and public service. Today, my fellow Pitt grads, you join their glorious ranks, and congratulations. But to what end do you become a member of the legal profession? Where do your careers take you after today, when the celebrations end and the study for the bar exam begins? What is next after you pass the bar? And how will you make an impact? Perhaps the most important question of all is what will your future legal challenges be and how will you rise to those legal challenges of the future? Will you take on the new opportunities presented? And if so, how will you find your purpose? When I say purpose, this means establishing a set of values, principles, and beliefs that give meaning to you, and then using them to guide the decisions and actions that you take as you pursue your own legal careers. When I graduated in 1983, my law school commencement speaker was Professor Derek Bell, also a Pitt Law graduate, and he went on to become the first tenured African-American professor of law at Harvard in 1971. He charged our class to take on challenges in the law with a purpose. For him, as a black lawyer, he experienced racism in the profession at a time when there were very few lawyers of color. 
he used his law degree and his life experiences dedicated to advocating for civil rights. I still recall today his message. It was to make a difference and to have a purpose as you pursue your career. At the time of my graduation, I focused my purpose on making sure I could represent my clients to the very best of my ability and to follow the rule of law. My first law job, as Mark Nordenberg mentioned, was a trial attorney at US Steel. Back then, 40 years ago, it was a Fortune 100 company, one of the most important manufacturing giants in the country with businesses in coal mining, steel manufacturing, bridge building, shipping fleets, railroads, and international engineering design work. Back then, the company helped to rebuild countries after World War II, including Taiwan. I even had an opportunity when, one of our, when our oldest son was living in Taiwan, working for the United States government, to tour Taiwan and actually see today those symbols of US steel on the bridges and the platforms. But shortly after I started my career, was the beginning of the downward spiral of American manufacturing in general, and the steel industry in particular. As a young lawyer, I learned to deal with many new legal issues that we hadn't had a chance to study in law school. From ERISA, the newly created Employee Retirement Security Act, ultimately the building of the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation to protect failing pension plans at the time as companies were laying off employees. And then later on to years lobbying in Congress as I personally worked on drafting new laws, new legislation for Buy American and Berry Amendment laws to protect American manufacturing. But I only mention this brief history for each of you to consider. I just highlight in that lengthy career of mine some of the things I was challenged to look into. You will be faced as lawyers with many new legal challenges that we can't even guess will occur in the future. And these will present vast opportunities for you to be purposeful in helping shape the law and your client's needs. And I'm confident in your ability to do so since you've already mastered one of the most significant challenges to impact not only our country, but the world. And that, of course, is the global COVID pandemic. Having spent most of your law school years virtually, you are now better prepared than many in the practicing profession to tackle the future of work and the future of the legal practice. You rose to the challenge, you mastered it by the sheer fact that you're sitting there today waiting for your diplomas. Think of the many new ways of learning, meeting, and practicing that you are now far more ready to engage and enter a world that has become accepting of hybrid interactions. So this in and of itself presents many opportunities for each of you to grasp. But certainly, you also enter a world where the ever-changing focus on climate response will present further new legal issues to tackle. I learned when I was in law school that people were subject to legal rights and then I also learned, wow, corporations are legal entities and have rights. But now, your generation of lawyers learn that there are many other non-human entities that are being provided legal status. We already know that in 2017, New Zealand granted the Waganui River legal personhood. And the year you were starting law school, the fall of 2019, Bangladesh was the first country to grant full legal status to all of its rivers. The environment and its many challenges will provide new and interesting opportunities for your great legal minds to deal with. Of course, during your time in law school, you also witnessed one of the greatest challenges to our democracy and the rule of law, the January 6th Capitol riots. And regardless of your political affiliation, the challenges of that day have raised many many new legal issues. And as new lawyers, you will be participants as society grapples with future challenges to the rule of law in this country. Another headline, the war in Ukraine, the most significant war to impact Europe since World War II, 
will also bring many legal challenges as international treaties are interpreted, challenged, canceled, and renegotiated. Will you take up the opportunity to renegotiate those international treaties? And alongside all of these events, the role of social media and technology coexist and will continue to bring many new legal questions seeking answers. And I can tell you that technology did not apply to us in 1983 as we still dictated our briefs and typed them on typewriters. But each of these global events and others we can only dream about need legal analysis, advice, and wise counsel. Whether it's for refugees and the analysis of immigration law, interpretation of the NATO agreements, new public health laws of the future, and new or better rules and regulations surrounding technology, whether it's for privacy rights or First Amendment rights. Each of you has the training and the critical thinking skills to now jump into the legal fray. Again, the opportunities abound. So where does all this lead me, and what advice can I provide? Well, you heard from Chancellor Nordenberg some of the places to where my Pitt Law degree was able to take me. Whether it was working as an employment lawyer in the 1980s, to lobbying in Washington, D.C. in the 90s, whether it was working on financial laws such as Sarbanes-Oxley in the 2000s, going on to deal with mergers and acquisitions in the 2010s, and then to my most recent career, working on some of the nation's highest national security priorities in cyber and intelligence. How did those career opportunities happen? Was it serendipity? Was it just luck? No. It's about opportunity and purpose. My career did not happen by chance. When new and exciting opportunities presented themselves, I jumped in. Let me tell you one brief story of an opportunity as an example for each of you. It's about what you may or may not think you're capable of accomplishing. In law school, you heard the courses I did take, but I never took a tax course or a financial course. I didn't even take a securities law class. And I certainly wasn't an auditor or an accountant. But in 2004, when Congress passed a new law called Sarbanes-Oxley, I'd now been out of law school almost 20 years. I was working as a corporate lawyer for an aerospace materials supply company. And all of a sudden, this new law was passed. While it had more to do with auditing rules for publicly traded companies as opposed to real legal analysis, Nonetheless, it required publicly traded companies like mine to revamp their accounting systems. At the time, our company struggled to find the accountants to get the job done. The management team and the finance group didn't have the right skills to get the changes accomplished. And all of a sudden, we found ourselves in the middle of a crisis. We were unable to file our legally required securities reports with the Securities and, Exchange, Securities and Exchange Commission. All of a sudden, the board of directors turned to me. We were a company in crisis, and because of that, suddenly, I found myself late on a Saturday night getting a phone call from the chairman of the board. He said, the board has voted to put you in charge to fix this problem. I recall vividly saying, well, wait a minute, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a financial expert. His comment was, no, but you have the analytical skills, you can take the facts, you can execute, you're organized, you can get the job done. And of course, as you can imagine, I did. I didn't do it alone, but what it tells you is lawyers, with the skills you have, you can take on many new challenges and accomplish far more than you ever thought. And from that day forward, it became clear that my experience in the courtroom, learning extensive facts of a case, presenting them in an orderly fashion, and the training to analyze the law and apply it, 
serve well in many situations. And from that day forward, I had the opportunity not only to continue as the general counsel, but to move into the role of the principal financial officer, and ultimately I became the first woman CEO of a metals company in 2007. So let me summarize and tell you, as a result of my own experiences, I have three very specific pieces of advice. First, work hard. There is no substitute. Whether it was when I was lurking late at night on an appellate brief or preparing my closing argument for a jury trial late at night in a hotel room where I was representing clients in some federal court somewhere in the country, the resulting product mattered. Hard work matters to get that excellent product. Second, be true to yourself. Take on the intellectual challenge, trust your instincts, follow the ethics guidelines. You have been trained to think like a lawyer, so make sure you do. Believe in yourself, and remember the law is surrounded by the ethical code of conduct. Follow it. As Mother Teresa stated, be faithful in small things. It is in them that your strength lies. I believe this applies very well to the law. Don't cut corners, don't fudge citations, and always represent your client well. That is what is required. And third, hope for a bit of luck. But in the end, we must all make our own luck. How did I do this? When asked to take on a matter outside my comfort zone, I didn't hesitate. For good or bad, I said yes. So when a major legal challenge requires long hours, well, work those long hours. The reward will be for a job well done. And when it's done, you will have time to balance. You will have time for family, and you will have time for friends. So my fellow Pitt Law grads, when a new challenging opportunity presents itself, I say follow it. You may never know where it will lead. Take on the challenges and the new opportunities as they come your way. And you will find your own purposeful existence supporting and defending the rule of law for your clients. So since I did spend a large portion of my career in the aerospace and defense industry, I'm going to close with a quote one of my favorite females who like to take on challenges and create her own experiences and opportunities in aerospace. And that was Amelia Earhart. Quote, the most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. You can do anything you decide to do. So to my fellow graduates from Pitt Law School, Go out there, take the challenges with purpose, and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, John, thanks so much for your remarks and your inspiring words. Uh, and let me thank you and Dave for everything that you have done for the law school uh, and for the university. As a small token of our appreciation, we have a gift that we'd ask you to uh, come and open right now if you can. Thank you. Uh, if, if you go ahead and open it, for those of you who can't see from here, it's a picture of Chancellor Nordenberg and Dean Sell, uh, and these are two giants of, uh, in Pitt Law's history, uh, and they are the two individuals who are probably most... Yeah. <laughs> Sure, no, and it's the two individuals who really made Pitt Law what it is, uh, and I know that they were special to you. And I also want to thank Chancellor Norton, Nortonberg, Nordenberg, who uh, took the super secret, uh, top level secret mission to uh, keep the entire, uh, uh, to, to supply the picture and then keep the secret from going. So, thank you. Before we move on to awarding degrees, we have a special presentation to make. This past year, like so many others, we, lo we too lost 
much loved University of Pittsburgh colleague and friend who was enrolled in our MSL program. Her passing was far too early and left us brokenhearted. Today, we want to honor the life and work of Peggy Dunklin. For this, I asked Amy's dear friend, Vice Provost for Enrollment Management, Mark Harding, to come forward and to tell us more about Peggy. Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity and privilege to, uh, to be here and do this distinguished guest. Staff, faculty, friends, family, graduates, I wanna thank our trustees, the offices of the Chancellor and the Provost, Dean Wildermuth, the amazing law school staff and team, and the Office of the Registrar for everything you've done to provide this opportunity to honor and recognize Margaret. We know her as Peggy. Miller Dunklin and recognizing her achievement and providing this important moment for her family and friends. Peggy earned a bachelor's degree in communications in 1988 and had this day circled for a long time. She was close, she was this close to realizing one of her biggest dreams in receiving a second degree, the Master's of Studies in Law. Sadly, she passed away on December 7, 2021. She was only 55 years old or young and lost her battle to cancer. I can't do justice in just two or three minutes for all that she accomplished and all that Peggy meant to those whose lives she's touched in just a few minutes. So, in the spirit of all the speakers up here and in just a few comments to shine a light on Peggy, who was and will always be a light to her family, friends, colleagues, and community, she served Pitt for 33 years. The last nine is my director of budget and human resources for a unit that's about 110 people. Budget and human resources is important to a unit, to most units anywhere in any office, right? It's the engine that drives everything. Everything is people and money. Everything and people cost money. But Peggy was that engine. Education meant a lot to her. Learning meant a lot to her. Her office was adjacent to mine because we interacted every single day. She's a pit person through and through, Peggy. This was her second home. Family first always, but her second family pit in the individuals who she served. Her work, education, helping others was her passion. So just a quick little story. One of her greatest legacies is Peggy's affinity to and ability to help others, even in the face of adversity. Two weeks before her, her death, she asked me to visit her. She actually shooed out the other members of her family that were in the, uh, in the hospital room, and I was nervous. She looked at me, and this is what she said. She had me lean in and made me promise that after she passed, that I would remind the entire staff because she didn't think she was gonna be around to do it of two important things. And I'm like, Peggy, I'll do anything you want. She said, make sure you tell them to bank their sick time because you never know when you're gonna need it. And make sure you put as much money as possible away toward retirement. She told me this as she was trying to manage through a lot of sadness and pain. But this was Peggy, her spirit, her wanting to help others, putting others before self and channeling her favorite quote, always attributed to Maya Angelou, and that's I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. That was central and essential to Peggy. And when we talk about Pitt family, the other thing I just wanna mention quickly is that Peggy and her family are next level. Many of them are here today. Peggy's a lifetime Pittsburgher. She's one of 11 children. Here's the next level, all of whom attended Pitt. Most who received their degree from here. Her daughter not long ago received her degree from Pitt, works from UPMC, and Michael's gonna be on stage in a minute. I'm just gonna say, Pitt's always here for you. You can still get your degree from Pitt. And your son, who's gonna be up here as well, Peggy's grandson, I'm looking forward to admitting him as a future Panther someday. Two of her brothers were Letterman in baseball. Peggy's father worked as a superintendent of maintenance in Tower A, and her sister Katie, who will also be up here in just a moment, works at Pitt. Her family has worked a total of 75 years 
here. Peggy is, was, always will be the personification of Pitt for life. Blue and gold were absolutely part of her soul. I received official word just two weeks ago that an endowed fund was created that will be known as the Peggy Miller Memorial Fund. After just two months, the generosity of a lot of people, we raised over $27,000 that will permanently, for life, endow a fund where we'll get to provide two $500 book awards for students with financial need from the Pittsburgh area in her honor, to honor her legacy. So, with that, here's the bottom line for her family and for the graduates. Today's recognition, in my opinion, serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of learning. It's meant everything to her, and I know she's with us today and looking down on us receiving this honor the importance of learning and how it can lift, inspire, energize, and so much more. So with that, I just want to finish with congratulations. And if I may riff off of our speaker for just a moment, I hope all of you, as Peggy did, embrace the opportunities with purpose. Remember to lift as you climb. Congratulations to everyone. Congratulations, Peggy. Congratulations, family, for supporting her and helping her realize this dream. Thank you, and hail to Pitt. So we now ask that Peggy's family who are here today to stand up for a moment of recognition. Thank you. I would also like to invite the Dunklin family to come forward so that Mark and I can officially award you Peggy's certificate. We will be joined on stage by Peggy's two children, Michael and Maura, and her grandson, Will, and her sister, Katie McKay. Thank you again, Mark, and thank you to the Dunklin family for being here and for letting us pay tribute today to Peggy. I'm going to now pass it back over to Dean Hamoudi. So now the moment we've all been waiting for, we're going to proceed to the commencement of the class of 2022. The first thing I just wanted to point out, we have a lot of professional photographers with super fancy cameras more expensive than my car. If there's a fire, they'll save the cameras, they'll leave me behind, it's a good decision. Uh, so there, uh, I promise we have really good photos. They'll be better than any photo that you can take with your iPhone. You're of course welcome to take photos, but we just ask nobody to try to come down and get a, a better photo. We will have some really high quality uh, photos for, for all of you. Uh, and feel free to enjoy uh, the moment from your seats. Uh, and certainly in the old days they used to say, please wait until all the names are announced. You don't have to do that. Uh, your child is graduating from law school, raise the roof. Uh, first, yeah. <laughs> first, we're going to have Professors Jay Hornack and Mary Crossley read the names of our six participating certificate graduates joining us today. Our graduates are from the Human Resources Law Certificate as well as the Healthcare Compliance Certificate. Our certificates are designed to deliver high quality and focused content from experts and their support graduates to acquire specialized knowledge needed to advance their prof profession. After that, we'll have Professors Ben Bratman and Graham McIntyre read the names of the eight participating Masters of Studies in Law candidates. The MSL degree, Masters of Study in Law, is for those intending to supplement their current skills and knowledge with focused study of the basics of the law, as well as an exploration of specialized legal and regulatory arenas. 
In addition, Professors Ron Ban and Chuck Katubi will assist in granting the degrees of Doctor of Juridical Sciences, uh, SJD, to two graduates of our doctoral program for foreign scholars, as well as presenting the 27th class of LLMs, Masters of Law candidates. And these are lawyers from other countries uh, who have engaged in an intense year of graduate study here in the United States and at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, next, we'll have Professors Judy Teeter and Chuck DeMonico read the names of our four participating 2020 JD candidates. Those who missed out on the in-person experience uh, will have the opportunity to walk across the stage from two years ago. We're really delighted to have you back with us today. Uh, and finally, uh, Dean Linsenmeyer, Ali, and I will read the names of the 2022 JD candidates, Juris Doctors. Uh, all graduates are going to proceed across the stage to be congratulated. They'll have their picture taken. Uh, and receive a certificate of membership in the Law School's Alumni Association. So before we proceed, let me ask David Hickton, uh, the founding director of the University of Pittsburgh's Institute for Cyber Law, Policy, and Security, which has been doing a really wonderful uh, set of activities that he helped found, uh, and a member of our law faculty. And he happens to be, as you all know now, uh, married to our commencement speaker, uh, Don Hickton, and Judge Fisher of the Federal Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit, distinguished jurist fellow here at Pitt Law, uh, and a trustee of the University of Pittsburgh to come forward to perform the official presentations of the degrees. Will the candidates please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me as a representative of the University of Pittsburgh and on the faculty's recommendation, I present to you the Certificates of Human Resources Law and Healthcare Compliance, as well as the degrees of Masters of Law, Laws, and Masters of Studies in Law, which entitles you all the rights, privileges, and honors thereto appertaining. And by virtue of the authority vested in me as a representative of the university and on the faculty's recommendation, I present to you the degrees of the Doctor of Juridical Science and Juris Doctorate, which confers you all the rights, privileges, and honors thereto appertaining. Congratulations, you may be seated. Thank you, and so now I'm just gonna ask Professors Crossley and Hornack to come forward to announce the certificate candidates' names. Donna Brace. Chen Chen. Kimberly Diamond. Michaela Hardy. and Kayleen Truden. Kelsey Cole. I'm sorry, now we're going to ask Professor uh, 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 Bratman and McIntyre to come forward to announce the MSL students. And I believe Kelsey Cole was, in fact, an MSL star. Okay. Chinu? Maida Seamer. Okay. 
Sarah De Fior Sprouse. Eileen Froki. Lisa Garland. Greg Elvis Griffith. Priscilla Heater. Joseph Junker. Teresa Kennelly Cook. Yolanda Murphy. Jesse Roy. Jordan Ulrich. Stephanie Varholak. Uh, thank you. Now, Professors Brand, Kutubi, and I uh, will, uh, will present the LLM and SJD degrees. Dean Wildermuth, uh, members of the faculty, it is my distinct honor to present the members of the class of 2022 receiving the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science. Wasfi Al Shara. They are being hooded by the chair of their dissertation committee, Vice Dean Hamoudi. Mace Haddad. And it's uh, my pleasure to announce the graduates with the LLM degree. Dominic Bly. <clears throat> Benedict Clatter. Julia Giannotti. Clotilde Hocard. Ali Abdullah Koastani. Camille Lolani, Julia Linda Miller, Cameron McCrum, Anna Luisa de Souza Palmina, Alberto Pomari, Philip Serbanowski, Kingston Uwandu and Raphael Viale. So now Dean Linsenmeyer and I will, I'm sorry, no, Professors Teeter and DeMonica will come forward to announce the 2020 JD graduates. Marcus Gaines Cherry. Kevin Isom II. Taylor Smith. Anastasia Snyder. And finally, and last and certainly not least, Dean Linsenmeyer and I will be announcing the 2022 JD candidate names. I'll turn it over to Dean Linsenmeyer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Katherine Andrews. Luke Baptiste. Christopher Badurka. Emily Beacon. Vivi Besteman. Ashley Biernesser. Colton Blair. Anne Bloomberg. Abigail Briggs. Brianna Brown. Deja Bryant. Nicholas Chan. Michael Colosimo. Spencer Coolidge. Chris Cornelius. Kyle Casaletto Miller. Joshua Cosson. Kara Daly. Connor Daniels. Anoki Desai. Priya Desai. Alexander Detweiler. Patrick Dongmo Tsage. Jacob Dougherty. Mackenzie Doiak. Frankie Exler. Oren Michael France. Robert Galloway. Melina Georgiades. Tyler Gillette. Daniel Graziano. Henry Greco. Zoe Goudreau. Richard Harbauer. Stephen Harper. Danielle Harrington. Olivia Pasqualina Hilborn. Emma Howard. Charles Howe. Boutros Imad. Danielle Lee Jacobs. Noel Johnson. BJ Johnson Tanko. Yeah. 
Isaac Joseph. <laughs> Hannah Kale. <laughs> Nikki Kang. <laughs> Alexander Keller. Michael Kennedy. Emily Kessel. Trisha Clan. Daniel Clapper. Nisha Krishnan. Lamoureux. Tyler Lamoureux. Jesse Lamp. Andrea Larson. Alex LeBlanc. Sophie Lee. Dylan Lennon. Brian Leonard. Cassandra Moss. Zachary Maddox. Cody Madison. Andrew Lowry Melendra. Devin Malone. Mangoulis. Armand Mangoulis. Matthew Marculin. Joseph Marisi. Angela Maroney. Andrew Melzer. Karina Mendola. Kristen Mashera Mitchell. Matthew Nace. Congratulations. Matthew Nicasian. Aaron Napoleon. Hey, Joe. Congratulations. Tara Nath. <laughs> Valeria Sofia Negron Diaz. <laughs> He's got it. Anthony Nice. <laughs> Tyler Nyman.
Alexandra Nagaida. Hey. Caroline Orico. Veronica Oviedo. Annie Parsons. Alexandra Patterson. Hey, congratulations. Forrest Paul. Hey. Oh, that was just tough. Annalise Peters. She's a professional athlete, by the way. Dean Phillips. Mira Rajput. Jaden Rankin Wallers. Hey, congratulations, Amanda. Amanda Roche. Hey, congratulations. Emily Rollins. Congratulations, Emily. Sarah Schrader. Andre Salito Ferrari. Congratulations. Ronald Sessa. Rebecca Shearer. <laughs> Seth Sherman. Congratulations. Peyton Smith. Congratulations. Yeah, this was tough. William Snow. Michael Stafford. Sorry? Steinbugel, you got it. Max Steinbugel. Sarah Surratt. I think I got this one. Madison Sullivan. Hey, Jordan, congratulations. I like the, I like the chords. Jordan Taylor. <laughs> Alex Thomas. Hey, congratulations. Eric Thomas. Hey, congratulations. Good, how you doing? James Timko. Congratulations. Carly Turgamak. Marisa Vaccarello. Congratulations. Congratulations. Danielle Vili. <laughs> Callie Vento. Congratulations. Hey, how are you? Congratulations. Gabrielle Wast. Wast, excuse me. Marguerite White. Congratulations. Ooh. Rachel White. Congratulations. Caitlin Wiggins. Jean Yasudas. And Mike Zula. 
Friends, family, distinguished guests, I give you the class of 2022. I'll turn the stage over to Dean DC now. Thank you, Dean Hamoudi. It is my great privilege and honor to introduce to you the Honorable Mary Jane Bowes. Um, Judge Bowes is a uh, Judge Judge Bowes is a member of the Superior Court of Pennsylvania and is also the president of the uh, Law Alumni Association. Judge Bose is here to welcome you to the legal profession. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. I recognize I might be the last thing between you and a possible adult beverage, so I'll be brief. <laughs> When I graduated from Pitt Law School in 1979, there was no internet, cell phones were years away, and there was a singular terminal in the law library with Lexus on it. We were surrounded by books, typewriters, and paper. Things have changed in the last 43 years since I graduated, and I can't even imagine what the legal profession will look like 43 years from now. But several things have remained the same. I had outstanding professors, just as you did. I received a first-class education from the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, just as you did. And I graduated with a ready-made group of colleagues, my fellow Pitt Law graduates. They helped to ease the transition from classroom to practice. They provided guidance, friendship, sometimes job tips, and more than once, moral support as I navigated the busy practice of law and my legal career. Now several of my colleagues on the Pennsylvania appellate courts are fellow Pitt graduates. Those friendships and relationships have endured I learned from them and other fellow graduates, just as we will learn from you. The bond of being a Pitt Law grad is a strong one and a permanent one. Your collective experiences, accomplishments, and achievements at Pitt Law School were extraordinary and were supported by many. You now carry on a great tradition of exceptional lawyers, trailblazers, and zealous advocates who have made a real difference in our world. We, your fellow graduates, welcome you to the bar and to the University of Pittsburgh Law Alumni Association. Through this association, we support the efforts of the law school and its students. We provide networking and educational programs for our graduates. We highlight the achievements of our alumni and we create mentoring opportunities for law students and young attorneys. Come, join us. We are here for you. Congratulations, and we wish you every measure of success in the exciting days ahead. Thank you. And thank you, Judge Bose, and thanks to all of you for joining in this celebration of incredible achievement. We're all really proud of you. And now, the moment that everybody's been waiting for, and I realize I'm really the last thing between you and an adult beverage, and I actually don't care about your character and fitness anymore because you're no longer members of the university. Well, you're alumni, but. Uh, and the moment you've been waiting for, with the class of 2022 please rise?
Please move your purple tassels from the right to the left. And as the, on behalf of the Dean of the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, let me first be the first to offer you my congratulations to all of you on your graduation. Thanks once again to everybody and all of our cherished guests for joining us today. We wish you well and really have a great time celebrating today and, and this evening.